Hello everyone, this is Food is a Conversation Alumni Edition, Session 33. These conversations are scheduled to introduce you, our ecosystem members who graduated from any of the educational programs organized by the Future Food Institute. Let it be a summer school or the Food Innovation Master program or now the Food and programs what we organize together with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. So today I'm actually welcoming Radhika uh, with me. Ciao. Hi, Julia. How are you? Oh, I'm very good. How are you? Good. Good, good, good. So I just quickly finished the intro and then we can start uh, with the questions. So uh, these conversations happen um, twice a week. Uh, once on Tuesday and once on uh, Thursday. We try to do it in two different times uh, because obviously you can imagine we have, uh, we have alumni from all over the world. And this is a very casual 30 minute conversation where you will hear about their local food system, how did they end up being part of the future food community and what are they busy with right now. Um, please, I encourage everyone to post your questions in the chat. We will make sure that we find time at the end to, to answer them. And now, without any further ado, I would like to introduce you, Radhika Kandelwal. Hi, how are you today? So excited to have you here. Also, I need to have a spoiler alert here. We will also have Radhika online on our event uh, tomorrow, but we organize with the UN Food System Summit. So watch out for our 23-hour marathon and, and search for the session from Asia because you will hear from her tomorrow as well. So Radhika, let's jump right in. Tell us, please, how did you end up um, joining the Food and Climate Shape Food Camp in July? So... Um... It was actually quite funny. Uh, it was during the lockdown, but I already started working. And um, Elizabeth is the one who actually encouraged me to join. And I wrote to her back and forth and kind of annoyed her also with all sorts of questions. <laughs> and uh, she was really, really patient with me. And she told me exactly how it works. And, um, and that's exactly how I got to be a part of the boot camp. Very good. Um, so tell us a bit more about your mission and strategies to work towards the sustainability development goals and how do you implement them in your current and maybe in your future projects? So, um, Julia, I am a very staunch believer of the fact that chefs are very, very important actors in the food system. Um, not actually just chefs, but everyone who has a role with food which makes everybody an important actor anyone who eats is an important actor in the food system but chefs do have um a sort of uh, stronger hand over everyone else because we have purchasing power we have uh, decision making powers we we know if we make the right choices for our purchases our menus our vendors it will result in um you know, a better food system. Um, and when we think of chefs, we always think of people who are cooking in restaurants, but that's not where I'm coming from. I mean, like everybody, like people behind uh, school canteens, hospital canteens, uh, supermarket food, uh, you know, even an Ikea cafeteria for that matter. Um, so so th those things add up in numbers and in huge numbers. So... Um, I, I do feel like uh, that's where we become important actors. Um, how I incorporate it in my restaurant is actually a, a number of ways. Um, we are a zero waste space, firstly. So we do um, measure our waste and we see exactly what we're doing and we make sure we're using all parts of the produce. Uh, we, we very, very strongly believe in advocating for small scale farmers. So we only buy from uh, small scale farmers and we, we are very particular about sourcing sustainably. Um, we also believe uh, very much in uh, buying seasonally and uh, locally. So our menu changes very, very often because uh, we try to incorporate as much seasonal produce uh, as we can in our menus. We also grow a lot of our own food, the um, rooftop, uh, which we have is full of uh, stuff which is used in the menu. Um, so th there are a bunch of things which we do. And uh, obviously, um, we also advocate very, very much for biodiversity. 
and uh, that is why we end up using lesser known produce and uh, even lesser known grains and ancient grains that's very good. So, uh, can you tell me how big of a team are you actually taking care of? Um, my team is 39 people overall. Wow. And when they approach you or they apply for a position, what do you see? Is there a change in terms of uh, people interest in, in um, working more sustainably? Or is there a specific profile what you are looking for when, you are, uh, when someone is joining your team? No, I, I feel like it's my responsibility to educate them and to learn from them because they all come from different regions in the country. So... Um, it, it is a cross-learning experience no matter how high up you are on the ladder it doesn't matter there is just so much going on that there is so much that you can learn from them so there is no actual criteria except for the fact they need to have some amount of skill um, which also we change over time but uh, other than that it, it just becomes our responsibility to kind of educate them yeah, I, I agree. But that means that all these people who are working for you, they will become like agents and they will also spread the word all over. Um, so when you mentioned ancient grains and uh, indigenous plants, could you give us a few examples? Here I would like to um, tell uh, Radhika is based in New Delhi. I completely forgot to mention that in the, in the introduction. And please, if you are there, check out her restaurant, Fig and Maple. That's where you can try the delicious creations that uh, she and her team are making. Uh, so we, we use uh, a lot of Kodo millet. Uh, we use uh, a lot of ragi. We use uh, barley. We use um, sorghum. We use amaranth. Um, there's uh, one particular produce which only comes into season for two weeks called bokkul. Um, we get it from uh, one of our small scale farmers. Uh, you know Sne, she was part of my presentation. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> Sne supplies uh, bokkul to us. It's only in season for two weeks. Uh, but um, fortunately, we are able to absorb it because we, don't, we, we are very flexible with our menu. And how do you see your consumers um, reacting to these, I assume, rarely used ingredients because they kind of got forgotten and they are also available for such a short time that that's not something what an end consumer can have on a regular basis. So how do you see their reaction when they see something like that in the menu? The consumer only cares about one thing, and that is experience. And as long as you are consistently supplying them with a good experience, they don't really care about, um, as long as they're not allergic, of course, uh, uh, to, uh, about uh, whether it's sustainable or not. Unfortunately, uh, you can't sell sustainably, uh, sustainability by shoving sustainability into people's faces. It still has to be delicious. It still has to look good. It still has to be part of a larger experience especially when it comes to an F&B outlet and uh, that is what we have consistently been doing. Uh, the first page of our menu reads uh, saying that we do not believe in consistency of food however we do believe in consistency of experience and which is why you will never taste the same thing again because we are buying small batches and you can't tell if one batch is going to be the same as the next one. Yeah, but I think this is something that slowly but surely people start to understand that they cannot have the same taste all the time. They also cannot have the same produce all over the year. So, or they have to have it in a different form, right? So, and that's where preservation and fermentation methods could come in the picture. So you are part of uh, multiple global networks the climate shapers, right? And also the chef manifesto. So why do you think uh, this is important to join forces and collaborate with others? So um, I have a really simple argument for this and that is uh, individualism versus collectivism. When you, I believe in individual action because finally it becomes collective action if everyone does it. But the truth about individual action is that it's a selfish act and uh, or it's only to fulfill the need of one person however a collective effort is 
building community it is building community is a resilience and uh, i feel like especially with the pandemic and everything which has been going on this is something we need to work on on a global level and uh, the chef's manifesto has been one network uh, which has connected over 100 plus 800 plus chefs from across continents and uh, we worked together through the lockdown um first it started with instagram lives where we would cook with each other from across continents uh, i cooked with the uh, spacey chef who was in ireland and uh, chef alejandra who was in los angeles and um, it, it was it was just so good to see that the fnb community across the world can be united with um you know just one network which is doing the right thing and advocating for the right of uh, stuff and these are all all the things that i think every chef in the chef's manifesto believes in and uh, i i wish that the network keeps growing over time because by the end of it i feel like uh, these these eight thematic areas if inculcated into chef education could bring about a much larger change as well yeah and so if you um we talked about these collective action and um making these live sessions online uh is that a network as well where you face a challenge you would also connect with the community to help you finding a solution oh 100% and uh, that has actually happened quite a bit with the ffi network as well uh recently sara one of my team members uh, started a new initiative uh, thought for food in lebanon and uh, we we did have a, a discussion over it and uh, we do reach out to each other whenever we are doing something or need some sort of help and everyone is just so welcoming of it during the ffi sessions as well that was one thing which was really really amazing how these people would come in and talk and they would not be they they did, they did not even like once hesitate to give out their contact details and uh, you know for you to reach out to them and be a part of a larger picture which was really really amazing to see yeah so if we talk about the boot camps tell me what was your experience and here i would like to talk about the fact that it was digital and it went through four weeks how did you experience that and what were the tools or experiences and activities what gave you the biggest take of it um initially i was really hesitant because um, i'm not a very screen person <laughs> i don't like sitting in front of a screen but uh, and i thought it would never be the same and i was really looking forward to tokyo because i was like i'm going to finally connect and all of that but however saying that i feel like when you were in a session it just felt like you were in a room with those people there was um, no stone unturned for that to happen and it was so interactive and um the gyan of these questions and <laughs> uh you you just knew what was coming and you know like i i made some really good friends as well and um the energy in the room and some of those sessions was unbeatable and i know sometimes i asked tough questions and put people in a spot as well but, but uh, even that was important for me because i needed to uh, just know what the scene is like on a global scale when you speak about these issues and not really i mean from people who are in a position to give you solutions yeah So if you look through the um the the content what was delivered and the activities what we did what do you think were like unique uh, parts of the boot camp um what others could you know watch out for and maybe help them to decide if they want to apply um see prosperity thinking for one was one of my favorite sessions because um I was so unaware of it although these are things which I think a lot of us would be practicing in real life without even realizing it and uh, it was very very insightful for me I think it's something which now I keep at the back of my head and I'm very aware of and um, the other sessions which I actually love was uh, uh, the one with Dr Stephen that was amazing <laughs> and um um 
the ones which we haven't used yet the um, sorry uh, reflective bulbs the reflective bulbs Ah, were yeah. amazing as well yeah like th- those were really small sessions and uh, it w- it was just so interactive and you really needed that during that time of uh, the pandemic especially and i feel like the fact that you guys thought about it and put that in the curriculum was insanely good great i'm happy to hear so we finish every boot camp with the hackathon and that happened with you as well and that's where you met sara who you mentioned before um and last week on the the first uh, international day of the start we had a day um you actually presented the the project you came up with you want to tell us a bit about that um the good food collective is what we actually came up with and it's an idea which um we are still working on it's not something we're going to let go of i feel like it is the need of the hour uh what the good food collective essentially aims to do is connect farmers to chefs within a clear communication channel where with that communication chefs can learn a little bit and farmers can save a little bit of their produce which is going for, going to waste whether it's surplus or whether it is just stuff which is growing excess on the farm um and because chefs won't know about it and we we can't expect to know about everything there like over 30000 edible produce in the world so um i i feel like it it can be a platform where we can actually have Uh, which can have global reach at one point of time because ingredients is something which i think chefs are constantly looking for uh trying to make their um, uh, food more interesting add more flavor add more flair even if you don't look at it from a sustainability point of view uh, even then it is uh, it's a great channel but if it is helping achieve the sdgs which it it does um nothing better so uh, we will work on it and we will uh, we will c- uh, continue to kind of drive that force till the time we don't get pre seed money <laughs> and uh, see where that goes great i'm i'm looking forward to see the progress so that's a shout out to everyone who would like to be, be part of a project and support it the team is looking for some pre seed funding to kick this off and be able to prototype so contact Radhika if you have some uh, some ideas and um my other question i also heard that you might consider another project maybe in the near future do you want to talk yeah. about that <laughs> yes uh, i am considering another project i actually am considering quite a few projects so. uh, i feel you <laughs> i think you may have heard this from my mentor <laughs> maybe <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what we are looking to do is uh, set up an educational platform for chefs uh, or even uh, people in culinary school at the moment it will just be a small curriculum but it will educate them about making right choices um which is something which like i previously spoke about is really important from a food system point of view which is actually really really wonderful right now yes sorry we yeah, just I'm lost you for a moment <laughs> yeah so um yeah we are working on a really small curriculum um just something um, along the lines of the manifesto if you will which will educate people on the eight thematic areas um we don't know what we want to do with the curriculum um in the future whether we can, we can uh, pitch it to a university or it just becomes a free online course or um you know like a token amount or whatever because that's a discussion i am st- yet to have with my mentor i think i have three sessions remaining with him and uh, yes yes <laughs> Yeah. yeah so great, my, great. but uh, that is something which i i really feel very very passionately uh, towards because i do think that can make a solid solid difference yeah and um so i am i'm reaching my um uh, final question here uh, and that's what i always ask from everyone on these sessions and that's picture or like draw us a picture about your preferred food future and it can be 
utopistic, you can think out of the box as much as you want. How do you imagine the future in our food system? Okay, do you want me to really draw it? <laughs> no, no, just like, you know, I'm a very visual person. Just explain and then I will see it in front of my eyes. <laughs> in my preferred future because i um, feel so so passionately towards zero hunger which is sdg2 um, also because it baffles me that there is enough food and uh, we are not able to feed everyone across the world there's still you know 800 million people going hungry but uh, so because it baffles me so much <laughs> you also have to understand how vulnerable our food systems are that there is this food but it doesn't reach the right people in my preferred food future everyone gets food good food nutritious food without losing out on any biodiversity which means a lot of policy change as well <laughs> very good call out for all those policy makers we need those policies which actually support it's a hard different few futures yeah it, it's my new thing calling it out <laughs> asking yeah, things we have to we have to yeah. so i am very happy that we have all these platforms now to actually yeah. call out on a global scale right, right? <laughs> so um now before we finish our conversation here is a bit of a um, an information delivery. So as I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation, today is a big day, World Food Day, and we will be online from 2 a.m. Central European time and introduce all these people who have something to say about our food system, who are already shaping the food system of the future. So please dial in. You will find it all over the Future Food um, channels. And this is a collaboration with the United Nations Food System Summit. So if you want to hear Radhika tomorrow or you want to see me, uh, then please dial in. <laughs> And then the other very important date is the 30th of October. Why is that an important date? The next batch of the digital bootcamp will start. So if you got inspired and you would like to be part of this community, you want to participate on this part-time for a big course um, coming, um, then please uh, visit our website, futurefood.academy, send in your application, and you will receive an email from me with the next steps. So, Radhika, thank you so much for being here today and sharing thank all of you your insights. And thank I'm you. looking forward to see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Julia. Ciao.